Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Listen, a man can tell other men, look on us not with the attitude of pride as touching the mercy of god that you've made commendable progress as far as attaining perfection is concerned you can tell people i have not found every key but i found certain keys and i can give it to you while i discover others oh there are keys there are keys there are keys and not everyone is looking for every key what you are looking for has been found by someone already are we together now the favor you seek the keys that command favor have been found i tell you they've been found by certain people the key to the presence of god has been found by certain people the key is to commanding signs and wonders not everyone is still looking for it there are men by grace and mercy who have found it it's called laying hold on eternal life you can give substance to your christian experience yes sir yes sir don't generalize weaknesses no not everybody is having your weakness there are people who have found strength the bible says god who had commanded light to shine not into out of there are people who have manipulated dark they've manipulated darkness till light came out of it they stood in their darkness and found god there there is light in every darkness the bible did not say god commanded light to shine into uh -uh. there are times there's no hope of light coming in but out of darkness out of pain out of tragedy out of death life can still come out so when a man tells you that i know how to prosper by god don't argue till you know the darkness that light came out from are you hearing what i'm saying when someone tells you god heals don't argue till you find out the kind of darkness that that light came out from there is light in darkness when a man tells you god can prosper you in ministry don't argue till you find out the darkness when the man says god can prosper you in a strange land regardless who likes you or otherwise don't argue until you find out the darkness when god sends light into darkness that is him helping you but when god brings light out of darkness he's making something that he used your pain as a raw material and brought light out of it listen there are people who stepped into a level of the healing anointing not by reading books they were almost dying they were almost dying everybody anointed laid hands on them they were left for dead and they shut their doors they said god of heaven i'm almost dying they read the bible themselves till they found the key that is light coming out of darkness and out of that pain will come a healing ministry don't you question that kind of anointing i tell you listen we live in a world where we do not respect the pain of people we trivialize the pain of people because light has already come out of the darkness there are people who came into this beautiful nation with no assistance whatsoever they were left in trouble they learned how to cry by experience not mentorship by experience they cried onto everything till they found god so when you come and they tell you god is able to bring people out don't argue with them they have known how to produce light out of darkness are we together let me give you the third one. I want us to pray. 
Alina Sopala Kruski Biataka Prandusieta. Perfected by knowledge that you can live where you are now in the spirit. You can live where you are now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a wind just, just moving around. It's what I'm seeing in the spirit. It's what I'm seeing in the spirit. And there are people who are going to be drinking of this wine of the spirit. It is grace. Listen, when I mentioned this light coming out of darkness, I felt a strong anointing on that statement. There are people who have stepped into levels in the spirit. Out of your darkness, your frustration, your pain, it looks like a solution is not coming. There is light there. You need to stop looking outside. The oil is in your house. The oil is in your house. Even if you go out to meet the prophet, you will need to return back to your house and shut the door. There's something you can do with that oil and it begins to multiply. There's something you can do. God can command light to shine out of, not into, out of, out of pain can come glory. Out of frustration can come grace. hallelujah please be seated i remember it was out of desperation mixed with frustration that i had my encounter with the lord jesus christ i knew there was something more I saw the way people did ministry and I said no there has to be a way I read my Bible and I saw the genuine power of the Spirit I read through history the lives of men like TL Osborne Maurice Cerullo these great men what did they carry what did they see I knew something was wrong and I made up my mind that I did not want to do ministry wasting my time and joining a queue in envy and jealousy and bitterness because of lack of results and I said God I will seek you till I find you I will seek you till I find you I will seek you till I find you and I was lying on the floor that night praying when the Lord Jesus walked into my room when he stepped into my room I saw him in his glory brilliance majesty stood before me I was shaking I couldn't explain what was happening to me what sort of an experience is this this is the Jesus in the Bible that everybody talked about ha. He never spoke a word to me. All he did was to stretch his hands towards me and light, light from heaven, light from the King, light from the Savior. As that light emanated my being, it was as if I was going to burst into pieces. Then he left. How he left, I cannot explain. He didn't come through a door. He didn't leave through a door. Hallelujah. From the time Jesus walked out of my room, there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I saw things I never studied. How I understood them is something that only God can help to explain. What was the meaning of this mystery? What is this? happening to me the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit my eyes started opening to see angels and to see a lot of supernatural things what is this strange thing it took me more than one year to recover from that experience more than one year see the rain 
pain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain Please be seated. We look unto Jesus to find the areas of darkness in our lives. We look unto exceptional models to find the areas of darkness in our lives. Number three, we look at the areas of pain limitations and struggles to know the areas we need to press for perfection you can use the index of pain limitations and struggles pain limitations and struggles a lady is going to begin to start laughing in the spirit this is a supernatural laughter by the spirit by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory please be seated so we look at the areas of pain we look at the areas of limitations and we look at the areas of struggles as pointers that there is darkness existing within that area if your area of pain struggle and limitation is your finances then it means there is darkness there you must be on a project if the area of pain and limitation is that in spite of the fact that you are born again satan seems to have an advantage over you you are weak spiritually it means there is a body of knowledge that needs to cover that gap who is learning yeah so we look on to jesus as that reference to help us see the area of darkness in our lives we look on to worthy models models who have demonstrated exceptional victory people who have laid hold on eternal life by grace and by mercy they've made commendable spiritual progress worthy enough to be references while we look up to jesus and then number three you use your pain you use your struggles and you use your limitations as a sign that there is darkness within an area if you can take note of these three things then you are ready to step on to perfection very quickly let me give you i'm not going to have the time to teach them i will just list them and then we pray keys to pressing for more the keys 
that help you to step into perfection haven't shown you how to identify areas of darkness thank you Jesus blessed be the name of the Lord glory to Jesus glory to Jesus Luke 15 please 8 and 9 the Bible talks about a very strange woman in a parable either what woman having 10 pieces of silver what did she have initially 10 the Bible says if she loses one piece the Bible says the first thing she does is to light a candle every time you desire perfection she started with 10 but lost one it is a waste to search in darkness and so the first thing she does is to light a candle to light a candle not to have a candle you can have a candle but if that candle is not lit you will never find what you are looking for so the Bible says number one she lights a candle and then number two she gets a broom goodness you know what that broom is your broom is your zeal your broom is your passion the broom there does not just mean the physical broom or whatever that you use with that zeal that passion likened to a broom the bible says with the candle in partnership with her passion she begins to sweep the house and seek diligently seek diligently seek diligently diligently can mean keep seeking after three years diligently can mean keep seeking after five years i will not stop till i find it i was given 10 i had a vision and i saw 10 it must be 10 in my life wherever the others are missing i will find them is someone learning now the bible says the woman was having 10 and she insisted that it must be 10 so every time you search the bible if you see healing there breakthrough increase favor and then you look at your life it's like the 10 you were given but right now you have to get a candle get a candle quickly and use your zeal as a broom begin to search in one church service you will find the fourth treasure in one convention you will find the fifth in your place of prayer you will find the sixth this is how you will keep picking them until you get to that level of perfection there are many like this woman fortunate for her she lost only one i can tell you there are some who have lost all but the good news is that they all fell in the room that means if you know how to search you will not find them in one location for another, you may find by pressing in prayer. For another, like you'll be learning, you will find by sitting down under structured mentorship to learn. But by all godly means, if you can light that candle, you are ready to get into perfection. Without your candle lit, you will not find it. Are we together? There are people based on your preordination. There are certain unctions, certain graces you should walk in. But as it is now, you've not been able to find it. It is available. It is that your hunger, you have light, but you don't have a broom. You have access to men who can teach you, but you don't have the requisite level of passion to pursue till you find. So let me give you the keys. The Bible says, let's finish the scripture, that she lit a candle and swept through the house and diligently sought till she found it. What happened when she found it? Verse 9. And when she had found it, not if, and when she had found it, the Bible says she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost 
there are some of you you will not need to call friends they will see your light and they will come they are the gentiles that will come to your light and even their kings will come to the brightness of their rising they will say we have learned by experience that god is with you the testimony of laban over jacob is what will be someone's testimony that men will come and say we have consulted by what means do you excel in the uk by what means is your church your ministry rising and excelling it is evidence that the hand of god is upon you it is evident that regardless the economy you found a way in the spirit to maintain victory keys number one let's hurry up the first key if you must press for more is called meekness meekness the willingness to learn the recognition that there is always more james 1 21 the first key for anyone who intends to press towards perfection leaving these elementary levels in the spirit to a higher level in the spirit it says wherefore lay apart of filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness this is how we receive in the kingdom meekness is a quality of humility but it's beyond humility you can be humble and not be teachable there are many humble people who are not teachable so meekness is the the it comes from an orientation that there is always more than your experience has captured and you must be willing to learn that more are we together I can tell you this the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth the reason why many people remain stunted in their faith adventure is that they are not meek they do not want to learn they do not want to learn we call it a know-it-all mentality even in the presence of obvious failure there are people who will not sit down and learn never be embarrassed if you find out there is an area you do not know sit down be meek to learn don't say i'm a man of god no your member can teach you something and you must learn are we together there are all kinds of teachers scattered around our space don't be too proud to learn 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 from children learn from subordinates learn from contemporaries learn from those who are above you learn from pain let everything be a teacher if you make everything a teacher you will learn faster what mentorship omits pain will teach quickly you see that hmm. what pain omits time will teach everything can teach but it will only teach a student number two the second key to pressing for more if you desire perfection is that you must consciously identify the areas of ignorance and frustrations in your life identify them if you cannot define your pain you can't get a solution the first thing the doctor does when you go to the hospital is not to treat you is to diagnose the condition am i right on that how many of you know that many diseases have similar symptoms headache is generally a symptom that goes with any kind of disease whatsoever so it will be costly to assume that just because you have headache it is just headache medical science would teach us that headache is oftentimes a response to something deeper maybe something higher are we together you must give definition to your frustration what is the area of frustration i need to define this i don't have destiny relationships they don't work i am a christian but as soon as someone comes into my life the lifespan of any valuable relationship in my life is one month it means there's something there's an area of darkness there i said it while we we're having the retreat with the leaders yesterday if it fails many times then you are the cause 
most times when things fail we look outward but if it fails again and again and again and again with you look inwards if the same driver bad driver drives any vehicle he will crash it so you can change the vehicle from a bmw to a mercedes-benz if it's the same driver it will be the same result are we learning this is very important identify the areas let me challenge you whilst you're writing can you write at least one area where you are trusting god you're writing that one area as per the frustration the limitations you have honestly discerned that has come from that area maybe it's prayerlessness honestly maybe it's lack of character maybe it's trouble in your finances maybe your relationships maybe your home maybe leadership you are wanting in that area you are a good person but you are not able to put a team together because you do not understand you don't have the intelligence that makes for leadership identify that area unashamedly so number one you must have meekness if you want to press towards perfection number two you must define your areas of frustration define your areas of frustration identify the areas of ignorance and frustration number three very quickly seek for knowledge seek for knowledge don't wait for knowledge seek for knowledge it is wrong to wait for knowledge you seek for knowledge the university does not go around looking for students the student who wants to be educated finds his way the uni the hospital does not go around looking for patients traditionally speaking every patient who believes he's sick enough finds his way to the hospital the assignment of the hospital is to be equipped enough to treat you but even when you are weak neighbors can help you they have what is called an emergency center in every hospital but the patient they will seldom come to meet you at home except you invite them but they are, it always starts from the person nobody just comes to bump into your house without an invitation and says i want to treat you you can sue them am i right on that you will have to call call through the lines or go to the hospital directly and then they come rushing there's an ambulance waiting but without your call they won't come many people are waiting for knowledge to come and meet them it is arrogant for a student to keep his teacher waiting you must be ready dr modok will say adaptation is proof of honor you would need to bend over backwards many times for the sake of what you want to learn who is learning tonight so meekness you identify the areas of ignorance then you seek knowledge and you seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources let me say that you seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources proverbs chapter 2 please 1 from verse 1 let's hurry up so that we can pray you seek knowledge number one from scripture and then number two relevant spiritual resources my son it says if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom follow carefully now and apply thine heart unto understanding verse 3 it says yeah if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding you see that now verse 4 if thou seekest her as silver remember our silver the parable it says if you seek her as silver and search for her as for heed treasures verse 6 okay verse 5 he said thou shall understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god the final verse 6 it says for the lord giveth wisdom and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding but only to the one who is passionate to seek you see that the parable jesus was giving this was what solomon saw a woman seeking silver like a treasure missing he says if you will seek for knowledge that way 
if you will seek for it like something valuable that has been missing don't freelance your search for knowledge if occasions work well no it doesn't matter how i feel i will go for knowledge i cannot end this year 2024 the way i started hallelujah seek for knowledge first from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources don't waste your time acquiring knowledge that is useless and cannot profit you remember i told you there are false lights decongest your life find knowledge that works don't be emotionally connected to error did you hear what i said don't be emotionally connected to error you know it does not work and yet you are so connected you will not leave it number four the fourth key you desire to press for perfection through knowledge you must cry for help in the place of prayer please note these keys number one meekness the attitude of meekness number two to identify consciously the areas of ignorance and frustration in your life list them name them so you deal with them number three seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual materials number four cry for help for god's sake in the place of prayer jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 call on to me the bible says and i will answer it says i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not psalm 61 from verse 1 and 2 you must learn how to cry for help you want to step towards perfection you must thank god for what he's done he's doing in your life but you must cry for help along the areas of darkness it says hear my cry O god then he says attend unto my prayer verse 2 from the ends of the earth will i cry unto you he says when my heart is overwhelmed he says lead me to the rock that is the rock that is not a rock that is available a rock that is higher this rock you see is not talking about what you know not rock like geography are we together that's a metaphor it doesn't mean a rock like a mountain mm -mm lead me to a rock but it, let it be a rock that is higher let it be a rock that is higher let it be a man that is higher let it be a platform that is higher lead me lead me i can't get there by myself so i cry i don't know the sermon i don't know the book that i will buy but lead me lead me to a rock that is didn't say i will find a rock lead me if you lead me it makes the journey shorter for me so i don't waste my time rigmaroling in error moving from pillar to post wasting my years only to find shadows lead me someone say lead me cry it from your heart lead me may god answer that prayer speedily for some of you you will step into a christian bookstore and your eyes will go straight to a book maybe just 50 pages but that becomes the answer to your prayer and fasting you have been led lead me to a rock higher than me have you heard many people who would tell you i sometimes i'm humbled hearing these testimonies they will tell you i never knew anything about apostle never knew anything about koinonia i was just crawling you were not just crawling you were led this is a prayer it says lead me to a rock listen i'm saying this so that after this meeting you will go and pray lord there is a way in the uk please lead me i'm tired of guessing my way all my guesses have only multiplied pain lead me to a rock lead me to a rock a place a person lead me to a rock a platform a ministry lead me to a rock that is higher lead me lead me there were times i desired certain graces and i prayed honestly lead me one meeting after the other one book after the other 
one video after the other. I remember buying the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter of late. Their entire 12, or was it 16 hours healing videos, VHS. How I found these people, I do not know. When I needed to walk upon my mind because I found out that I was poor in leadership and administration, my ministerial training did not capture teachings in leadership and administration, and I knew I had to outsource it. I said, Lord, lead me. I remember for one of the persons who now became a great mentor, the hand of God came upon me literally, and I was typing, and that's how the name came out. And from that day, one video, one 19 minutes video, and it transformed my life forever. It began a journey that supplemented for my deficiencies in the areas of leadership and administration. Are we learning now? Don't pamper failure. Deal with it fast. Deal with it. Treat failure like cancer. Treat failure like cancer. Only, only an unserious person will be told you have cancer and it's growing and multiplying in a hurry and then you don't do anything about it. Unfortunately, there are many people who are having the cancer of everything spiritually and yet they are lying down quietly as if everything is all right. Now, when you find an area that is not working, let that be your project. If you will pray, pray fast. If you will fast, fast on time. If you will study the word, don't postpone. It would, today is the day of salvation. And you begin to deal with it and don't stop till you win. You tried to set up a church and it did not work. Ah, okay, forgive yourself quickly and don't start another one. Go and buy books on church growth. Buy books on church growth and stay and stay study and stay and study and pray out of that revelation let your revelation come then in the presence of light you can say nevertheless at thy word you go back again and this time you will catch fish hallelujah let me give you the final key then we'll rise to pray so you cry for help in the place of prayer that God leads you to a rock that is higher than you can i give you the final key if you desire to press for perfection through knowledge the final key i leave with you tonight dear people here in the uk and then our global family you must submit to mentorship mentorship subsidizes the price that you will pay for a glorious destiny mentorship subsidizes the price that you will pay it grants you an opportunity to drink from people's experience without the pain factor hmm. hallelujah praise the name of the lord what mentorship will give you in one day 10 years struggles will not give you believe me on that it's amazing your mountain is relative to your mindset your mountain is relative to the understanding that is confronting it what you call a mountain is something someone is standing on are we together now yeah mentorship deflates challenges sometimes you can be crying oh i have all this problem and you see someone who just laughs and says don't worry it's a very simple thing a b c d and you find your way out can you imagine that this woman ran to the prophet and said i'm in trouble Two of my children are about to be taken. Look how he trivialized our problem. Don't worry, madam. What do you have in your house? Nothing. I'm telling you, there's an emergency. It's amazing how your lamentation does not affect me. You can be crying and shouting and someone says, it's all right. It's all right. I'm leaving tomorrow. And the person says, I just came out of jail. <laughs> I'm saying it's all right. Don't, um, don't, don't give yourself... It is comforting, the Bible said, to comfort others with the same comfort that you have received. There are people who have gone through the pain for you. It's unwise to go through it again. Don't try to dig a new well when there is an oasis springing forth water. Carry your jars and fill it quickly and be on your way. Because you can be digging that well and there are Philistines close to you. 
someone has fought already they dug the well he covered it dug the well covered it dug the well he's dug the well for you it's called jacob's well when you find jacob's well don't try to dig again drink from it and go on with the journey he sends a word to jacob but it lightens upon israel there are people who have gone through all of that pain they've made the business mistakes don't make it again let mentorship help you jump the step are we together they've been careless with their lives and they've paid the price learn from them it's wise to learn from experience but not your experience there are always people who have gone ahead ladies and gentlemen the final recap and we pray you desire to press for perfection number one meekness receive grace to be meek number two identify areas of ignorance and frustration don't assume define them and confront them number three seek knowledge primarily from scripture don't go around searching for devilish materials to complicate your life are we together you are already in the pit the way out is to stop digging let me give this as an honest counsel thank god i'm talking to koinonia be mindful of the things and the places you try to search for solution from i can tell you sufficient is the intelligence to bail you out if you can't find it are we together with all due respect let me challenge you don't dabble into satanic demonic occultic materials because you are trying to search for a solution it may give you a semblance of succor but you believe me it would plunge you deeper are we together now satan is a bad businessman don't do business with him he steals he kills he destroys what sort of business is that and you want to do business with such a man no a man who steals even if he steals alone he's still bad then he kills on it then he destroys run away don't do that day a bad bargain jesus said i am come that ye may have life 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 you know what life is life does not just mean the ability to breathe well life means every provision that upgrades you to the god class in experience is called life every every provision that can exalt a believer to the god class wisdom life favor life open doors life whatever can put you in a state of sufficiency so that you reflect the christ in experience is called life jesus said this is what i came to give you hallelujah so we're going to pray as for me i have made up my mind that on this journey towards perfection this journey towards becoming the most accurate portrait of christ that i become there is no stopping for me i'm calling you tonight koinonia uk koinonia global join me on this journey that regardless the achievements i know you are a great prophet i know you are a great man of god i know you are a great uh, businessman but why don't you lay aside the things that are before and press there is still something more the level of anointing you're walking in is commendable but not enough not enough to confront the darkness that is waiting in your tomorrow so you must press you must press you must press in the name of jesus christ you must press my call for everyone tonight is that you don't just listen to this as a wonderful sunday sermon i hope i was able to provoke you onto godliness that you leave this now with sound of revival and all of these times you have something to work on for the next season of your life 
you go back and you open up these notes listen to this teaching again and you get angry in your spirit lord i press for perfection church cannot be the same again my life cannot be the same again my christian experience cannot be the same again finances have done well my health is where there's darkness i'm going to buy a book on health jehovah rapha must be a revelation for me i will not wait until the day cancer kills me i will begin to press until i find it please rise up on your feet breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified one thing thou lackest you are spiritual but don't be silent on that financial situation it is the one thing you lack you are a brilliant person but you lack character it is an area that you found wanting work on it you are a person of solid character but you have no grace your head is dry and void of oil and so you need to pray lord add grace to my character for someone add character to the wisdom you have given me for someone you are an exceptional teacher of the word but you are a very bad leader you need to cry this area of darkness tonight we are going to pray very briefly as we wrap up the one thing that you lack is the one thing that stops you from attaining onto perfection thank god for the things that you have done the strides in the spirit but god is calling us to perfection someone in the next two three minutes i leave you alone with your maker your king i like you to cry from the depth of your heart pour out your hearts to jesus go ahead and cry go ahead and pray go ahead and pray koinonia abuja make sure you are praying let it be from the depth of your heart my dear people cry lord i desire to be perfected by knowledge there is a body of light there is a body of spiritual illumination missing in my life missing in my ministry missing over my destiny while celebrating you for the mighty things you have done in the various areas of my life where i've experienced victory i cry that this area of defeat this area of defeat this area of frustration this area of limitation limitation in ministry limitation in my home limitation in my destiny limitation in my spiritual life i bring it under arrest and i obtain grace go ahead and pray go ahead and pray one minute you are crying unto the lord let it be from the depth of your heart till the nations see jesus 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 
Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Glorify till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up. Exalt it till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up. Glorify. See the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah. Jehovah. We're the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah. Jehovah. I see the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. We're the army of the Lord marching in the name of Jehovah, Jehovah. Hi, 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 See Jesus, lift it up, exalted till the nations. See Jesus, lift it up, glorify. Hallelujah. Dave, come and sing for me, Empty Without You. So he sang this song yesterday while we were. I want to leave you all with this song. It's a very powerful song. I want you to sing it for me. You want to use your guitar? Okay, go ahead. Make it fast. We're praying. And um, I want to leave you with this, Koinonia UK. We are pressing for perfection. Thank God for Sound of Revival. Thank God for the workers meeting. Thank God for come up hither. Thank God for the many beautiful things that he's doing in our lives. But let me tell you this, we will never settle for less. Thank God for the souls that have been saved. Thank God for the lives that have been transformed. But for the sake of one more person left to be healed, we will pray. For the sake of one more person left to be changed, for the sake of one more soul left somewhere, we wouldn't stop. We will keep building, we will fast, we will pray, we will build capacity. Are we together now? But let me tell you this, in all your getting, in all your pressing, if you lose out with Jesus, you are truly empty. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, oh, I could buy all these classy, flashy things, still wonder you. I could write all. Side my name. 
I could ride the fastest cars and private planes, but still wind up here. I could get follows and fans and these perks of fame and still wind up here empty without you. No matter what else I have, I'm empty without you, Jesus. Ooh, empty without you, without you, oh God. Mm. I could have faith to move mountains, even prophesy. And still wind up here And so I pray with all my heart Let your love abound in me Till this world can see That we are empty without you And we are nothing without you, nothing without you. Oh, nothing without you. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. I asked Dave to sing that song because I want to make the final altar call for now. I believe that. In the midst of all of these people here gathered tonight and the many who are following by way of television by way of the internet there has to be someone tonight who is an apostle you are talking about pressing towards perfection I have not even started the journey I've been around church I have a Christian name perhaps related to a Christian perhaps related to a pastor perhaps connected to a mission family i'm not asking you how related you are i'm asking you if you know jesus and i want to make this altar call for someone i'm just looking for one sincere person one honest person who on hearing everything tonight you are saying i don't want to play games again tired of church i'm going to count one to five and everywhere at all whether at this auditorium and anywhere at all across i'm going to count one to five i want you to leave your seat and come stand right here with me and say apostle i want to make it right with jesus i begin my counting now one god bless you koinonia bless them as they come come god bless you we love you come come Come, come. I believe someone is winning that war tonight. Finally, come. Young and old, you're welcome. Come, come to Jesus. It's giving you a new beginning. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. Bless you, my sister. Come on, Koinonia, are you celebrating them? someone is coming from Abuja can you move those who are connected uh, whether online particularly Koinoni Abuja here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life make your way to the stage make your way to the stage right now someone will be there to pray with you let's give them a big God bless you are you celebrating a harvest for Jesus for Jesus it is true that we are empty without you. Empty without you. Ooh, empty without you. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your attention for just one moment.
I know that you are giving a card. All of you should have a card. And please ensure that they have the card. And um, where they need any help, we'll be glad to provide the help needed. But I want to say thank you. Please let me have your attention for one minute. Thank you for making this noble decision. I want you to know that this is the wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. The decision to be reconnected back to your source, to be reconnected back to Jesus. And I thank you for the courage to step out here. And as I'm praying for them, I'm also praying for everyone who is connected online. I'm going to lead you through a very simple but powerful prayer. Number one, I want you to believe in that prayer. Number two, I want you to pray it with faith in your heart, not as though reciting a poem. I want you to believe Jesus is in this place and the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. So I'm going to request that you lift your right hand if you can please, high above your head as a sign of surrender. Now say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word I love you with all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i'm a child of god i go from glory to glory and grace to grace amen now let me speak a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus I decree and declare based on the authority of God's word and on account of your confession I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God in the name of Jesus I declare that eternal life is yours I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus the grace to live the victorious Christian life is imparted upon you and you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus precious name we pray now please guide me okay just just a moment let me just give you an instruction do we have someone here okay so this side so here's what you will do for me please all of you in concert i want you to move to my right that will be your left you will have counselors just have a word and a prayer with you in one minute and then you'll be back to your seat thank you when you go you are able to feel your form whilst you're with them let's honor them as they go and then counselors lift the placards please and direct them they all move to my right and then you sort them whilst they are there god bless you keep clapping koinonia thank you jesus are you tired of clapping hallelujah praise the name of the lord it is right here that we come to the end of this journey that began on wednesday it's been it's been a very long journey from wednesday for walkers thursday friday saturday and now by the grace and the mercies of God, we've had the first service in UK. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you. Thank you and your dear wife. I appreciate you so greatly. And I appreciate every man and every woman of God here, whether or not I had the time to acknowledge you specifically. We're a house of honor, and I want you to know that we love you and we honor you as touching the grace that you carry hallelujah praise the name of the lord 
we're about to wrap up and then like you heard we have just like we we provided um, buses i'm sure that they're limited i'm not sure they're able to take more than 500 people so once we're done please let me encourage that you walk with the protocol and the security department so that they guide you on how to reach for your buses and then to be on your way back but i want to say thank you to everyone first the walkers once again and then to everyone who made it for this service i want you to know that you made history thank you koinonia abuja may god bless you koinonia global god bless you the body of christ thank you so very much now i speak the blessing of of god upon your life i decree and declare in the name of jesus the wisdom needed for the next level of your spiritual experience you receive it in the name of jesus i pray that the anointing of the holy spirit will rest upon you that you will know what to do per season and per time you will hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way walk ye in it i call you spiritual people i call you discerning people i call you prosperous people i call you loving people in the name of jesus i decree and declare that death and tragedy is far from your habitation i'm praying for you that you will experience favor like never before let the goodness of god wrap you throughout the remaining part of 2024 in the name of jesus and that every long-standing issue an issue that has been there for a long time you've prayed you fasted i agree with you one last time let it turn for you for a testimony for all those who will be traveling across the various parts of the uk and outside the uk i bless your trips i bless your journeys in the name of jesus i decree and declare there shall be no loss there shall be no loss when men say there is a casting down for you i declare that there is a lifting up i call you beulah and hephzibah the hand of god is upon you for good the lord himself will touch the heart of men for your sake your love for jesus will never wax cold it will wax hotter and hotter the fire upon your prayer altar will never quench it will burn and burn brighter and brighter in the name of jesus trusting god for a job may my god give you a good job trusting god for establishment may my god establish you in the name of jesus i declare that the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from your tent you will go from glory to glory this is our year of exceeding great reward may your reward come to you in the name of jesus i bless your september i bless your october i bless your november i bless your december i say it again september be blessed october be blessed november be blessed december be blessed good news all the way miracles all the way favor all the way joy all the way and now may the god of peace himself give you peace always and by all means in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We depart in peace we are led forth with joy it is good news all the way in jesus name let's hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can and then share the grace together one to go the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god 
the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever amen congratulations please give 10 people a big hug and then see you in 2025